guys, so you've been asking for it. Today's video, we're gonna talk about how you can decrease your sack rate or have a better breathing rate while diving. I'm gonna go over the top five things that I personally do to keep my sack rate very low and how it's helped me over the last 30 years as being a diver. All right, guys. So the first thing I do to help control my sack rate is I exercise. I hate exercising, but I do it so that I can have a good sack rate. And the way I choose to do it is with a little bit of cardio every single morning. It is five o'clock this morning. I usually get up between 4.30, 5 o'clock every single morning, and I make a loop around our farm. I live on a 50 acre farm, and I have several different trails that I run. And so I try to run a mile seven days a week. Sometimes I sprint it, sometimes I jog it, sometimes I sprint and walk it, but I get out and I go exercise. If you can't tell, I'm out of breath. I just got finished up. But how does this apply to my sack rate? Well, anytime you do any type of cardio activity, <clears throat> basically what's happening is you're increasing your heart rate. Your heart has to pump more blood. You got to perfuse more oxygen to get your body up and going. So as my heart rate increases, my respiratory rate increases as well. Just like when we go scuba diving, anytime you're in the median of water, basically what's happening is you're going through a median that is 800 times more dense than what air is. That means you're overexerting your body every single time you go diving. Doesn't matter on trim, doesn't matter on buoyancy, you're overexerting your body because you're trying to move through a median that's 800 times more dense than what you're normally moving through here at atmospheric or atmospheric air. So with that being said, my cardio work, basically what it does, not only does it kind of help me keep, stay in shape, it helps train my brain to tell me to slow my breathing rate down. So as my heart rate increases, as I'm getting into the groove of running, I can help manipulate my breathing by simply taking long inhales, long exhales, which is exactly what you want to do when you're diving. So the cardio training really truly helps and it's the first step in getting a better sack rate is going ahead and conditioning your body and training yourself or more or less training your brain on the proper way to breathe regardless of what the activity is. Cardio work does that for me and of course there's great cardio activities you can do. You can run, you can bike, you can swim. Uh, I personally enjoy running. I've always done it. Even when I was a police officer I did it. Every day I got up every single morning and I went and ran a mile. It helps me stay in shape but more importantly it helps me control my breathing which is the first step in having a good sack rate. All right guys, so the second thing I do to uh, make my sack rate a little bit better is I make sure that my gear is adjusted properly um, and I make sure that I, I keep it serviced on a regular interval. Now with Mares, it's a two year uh, service interval, meaning every two years you're gonna rebuild your reg. On my personal regs like this guy here, I actually rebuild it about every six months because I use it so much. But I still make sure that it's serviced properly and that it's adjusted properly as well. Now for me, I go by factory specs, whatever Mario says their regulators need to be set at. That's usually where my starting point begins. And the reason I do that is the engineers that develop this gear, they're a whole lot smarter than I am. And they know exactly uh, what pressures uh, should be coming through the first stage and the second stage. So I set it to factory specs, exactly what Mario says, and I just use their little guide here. It's just our service technician guide. And I set it to factory specs, and then at the end of that, I'll fine tune it to exactly the way I want it to breathe, so, and which is usually right at factory specs. So once I have it on there, and I use this little inline adjustment tool. It's a great little tool that you can not only check intermediate pressure with, but you can also check a cracking pressure. And you don't have to be a service technician to do this. Basically, all it is is just an inline adjustment tool that's going to adjust how easy it is to inhale and to crack, if you will, that demand valve system in there. And at the same time, I can check the intermediate pressure coming from the cylinder as well. Right now, the intermediate is slightly high, so I can adjust that on the first stage. And then instead of having to uh, check the cracking pressure via, say, turn the tank off, breathe, see if it works, and then turn it off, disconnect the hose, and then 
manipulate my demand valve that way. With the intermediate, I can leave the pressure going to the second stage. I can actually breathe on it, slide this little knob over, which will adjust that valve in there. And I can kind of do it on the fly. I can watch the gauge, breathe on it, and adjust it all at once. So the intermediate pressure checker really, or I'm sorry, the inline adjustment tool slash intermediate pressure checker really comes in handy there. And it works great. But having this thing adjusted exactly the way I need it to for the dive and making sure it's serviced on regular intervals, that definitely helps out my sack rate because I'm not having to struggle to breathe when I'm underwater. So I'm going to get this thing finished up and then we'll move on to the next tip. Alright guys, so the third thing that I do, of course, is, is I constantly learn. I'm constantly taking new classes. I'm actually reviewing one of the new XR programs from the SSI uh, curriculum, and this is just their extended range nitrox class. And so one of the things I like about constant learning or um, always learning new material is it keeps me better prepared for any type of dive situation that I may be in. And if I'm better prepared, simply put, that's going to eliminate some of those stress levels that occur when you go underwater. And if you eliminate stress, you can also decrease your sack rate as well because you're not overthinking things. Now, even as an instructor, I still take new classes every year. I try to take at least one new class that I've never taken before or I will audit another instructor's course simply so that I can remember some of the things that I've forgot over the last 30 years. So even if it's not an instructor that works for us, I've got several other friends that own dive shops in our kind of immediate area, if you will, and I'll go and sit in on one of their classes, even if it's at the open water level, and just try to sit through and see how they teach and learn something new or even learn, relearn something, if you will, something that I forgot. And once again, the better education I have in diving or the more knowledge I have keeps my stress levels down because it keeps me better prepared for any type of dive. And without those stress levels there, of course, my sack rate and my breathing rate will decrease as well. So constantly learning will definitely help your sack rate as well. All right, guys, so let's talk about weights for a minute because weights come in all different styles of weights. You got hard weights and soft weights. It can also come in different denominations. You got one pounders, two pounders, three pounders, four pounders, five. They go up to six pound, eight pound, and even 10 pound weights. You can customize a weight. If you've got a mold, you can actually pour your own lead and mold your own weights to whatever you need them to be. Uh, but weighting or being properly weighted is very key to keeping your sack rate very low because if we're overweighted, we're going to constantly be struggling to, to swim up and down, you know, to stay neutrally buoyant or whatnot. That means you're going to have to use more air in your BC. So being properly weighted and properly trimmed out is very key. You know, if I'm in the tropics and most of the time in the tropics, I wear just a, a three mil shorty, if even that. A lot of times I'm just in a rash guard and a pair of swim trunks. But when I'm in the tropics, I don't wear a lot of weight. All right. So I try to compensate since I don't have a lot of neoprene on, I, I don't have to wear a lot of weight. Maybe if I'm doing some deep wreck diving or penetrative wreck diving or even cold water diving or even cave diving, then I, I typically have to wear more weight because I'm in a dry suit. Well, having the correct denomination or a wide range of denomination of weights really helps out. Maybe I need 20 pounds. Let's say 20 pounds is what I need. Well, I can do that several different ways. Maybe I can get four uh, five pounders. Maybe I can get five four pounders. Maybe I can go with threes and twos and divvy it up. Let's say I need 10 pounds. This is a little bit easier math for you. If I need 10 pounds, I'm going to get a five and a five and put it on. There's my 10 pounds, right? Well, I can even divvy it up even more to make my uh, streamline ability, if you will, or my trim better in the water. I get two threes and two twos. I put a three up front and a two in the back in a trim pouch or, you know, vice versa. Maybe a two up front and the three. And then the same thing on the other side. And that's really going to help me out. So having a wide variety of weights and a, a multitude of denominations are really going to help as well. And also knowing your equipment, doing proper weight tests. If you get a new BC, go out there and do a weight test. If you switch over from, say, aluminum to steel, get out there and go do a weight test. One of the cool things about side mount diving is, is it almost forces me to be in that, that proper trim position. And there's, there's no standardization in side mount, and there's a lot of arguments about what tanks you should use. Should you use aluminum or steel? And it's really no different than back mount. It's what actually works for you and how much air supply you need to make a dive. That's what you should use. Well, for me, I use aluminum cylinders when I side mount dive. And the problem with aluminum cylinders is they tend to float up a little bit. Okay, so we can fix that. 
depending on what type of side mount BC you wear, maybe you got some front D-rings you can clip off to, or maybe even add weights to a tank. Well, one of the things that I don't like doing is adding weights to the tank because when I do that, it actually manipulates my overall weighting issue. So I make sure all the weight is actually on me and I make sure that my cylinders themselves are not part of my weight ratios as far as my dive. But I practice with that. I get out there and I practice. I make sure I have proper weights. You know, I can make my ascents and descents with or without tanks. It's not a big deal to me. But I get out there, I make sure I'm properly weighted, I make sure I have the right denomination of weights, and I divvy it up or I disperse it evenly across my body. Let's talk real quick about dumping weights real quick. I know this really doesn't have anything to do with sack rate, but when you dump weights, I've always heard students say, well, I want all my weights ditchable so I can pull them out in an emergency and that way I'm going to go up. And that's really not a good way to do. That simply means you are overweighted. If you have to ditch all your weights to swim up, you are 100% overweighted, which will uh, increase your sack rate. We want to decrease our sack rate. We want to have a low sack rate as possible. And if we really break it down to it, think about it, guys. If you are properly weighted and you move one pound, if you remove that one pound, you are no longer going to be properly weighted and you're going to be positively buoyant. You know, if you want to be a little bit safer, let's say two pounds. Let's say that you might be two pounds overweight or whatnot. If you remove two pounds, then you're going to be positively buoyant. I kind of rely on about three pounds. In that emergency situation, if I have to ditch weight, about three pounds is how much I ditch. Some people will go to four or five. But if you have to ditch all your weight just to get positively buoyant, then you are 100% completely overweight. So we never want to be overly weighted. We want to make sure that we're properly weighted and that we're properly trimmed out. And to be properly trimmed out, one of the things that I do, of course, is have a complete denomination of weights. If I need 20 pounds, I don't go with four or five pounders. I don't go with five, four pounders. I divvy it up evenly across and, and I try to get it to where I can trim my weight or trim my body out in the water column and that's going to help reduce drag on me. It's going to streamline my equipment as well. It's going to streamline my body and in return for all that, it's going to help keep my sack rate very low. All right, guys, so the final thing that I do to really get my sack rate where it needs to be or to control my sack rate is I simply go diving. I go diving every single day, seven days a week, year round. Actually, that's kind of a lie. There's three days of the year that I don't dive. That's Christmas, Easter, and Thanksgiving. Christmas and Easter for the obvious reason, and of course, Thanksgiving's the heart of deer season, and I'm sorry, but I got to have priorities. But other than those three days, I dive seven days a week, even if it's in a nasty mud-filled lake like ours is right now. We just recently had two hurricanes, so our lake has got a ton of runoff from two lakes that's up above us and from the runoff of the land all the way around us. But I dive in it. It doesn't matter how clean or how clear or even how warm the water is. I simply go diving. The more we dive, the better at it we'll become, the more relaxed we become, and just our skill sets will increase, and all those things combined will really help out your sack rate or will help lower your sack rate to where you can really make your air last as long as possible. But guys, I do. I dive in a, a slew of conditions. Warm water, cold water, clear water, nasty water, shallow water, deep water. I do a ton of diving year round. And I really believe that helps me out when it comes to my sack rate because it's conditioning my body. It's making me feel more comfortable in those less ideal or less considerable conditions, if you will. And that really helps lower my sack rate as well. But that's the fifth and final thing that I do to help out my sack rate. So there you go, guys. That's the five things that I do to help decrease my sack rate. First of all, I exercise regularly. That way, if I have a high heart rate, I can control my body or control my breathing and have a low respiratory rate. That definitely helps on my air consumption as well. Number two, I make sure my gear is properly serviced on regular intervals. I rebuild my regs when they need to be rebuilt, and I constantly adjust the cracking pressure and intermediate because as seats and stuff start wearing out in first stages and second stage, it will change. So I make sure that's in good working order that reduces the breathing resistance I have when I'm underwater, which in return also reduces my sack rate. Number three, I get proper training and I constantly train. Guys, the more I learn, the more knowledge I have, the better prepared I will be for any type of diving situation. And the better prepared I am, the less stress I will actually have throughout a dive, which will also decrease my sack rate as well. 
Number four, I never overweight myself. I make sure I'm properly weighted for every single dive I do, whether it's warm water, cold water, deep water. Uh, it doesn't matter the type of diving. It doesn't matter the uh, exposure suit or the equipment that I wear. As long as I'm properly weighted and properly trimmed out, that's going to help reduce any type of resistance underwater. It's also going to help my breathing rate and return. It also helps my sac rate. And then number five, I go dive. I dive every single chance that I get. That really helps out my sac rate because it allows me to condition my body for any type of environment out there, whether it's warm water, cold water, deep water, shallow water, it doesn't matter. Clear visibility, no visibility. It conditions my body and my brain to tell me, hey, I'm going to be okay. I'm going to be safe and comfortable when I'm underwater. And with all those other factors, that's what I do to help control my sac rate. Now, I will give you one extra tip out there, and it's simply have fun. If you're not having fun when you're diving, then you probably shouldn't be diving. Regardless of what it is, we need to be having fun. That's why we get into diving to begin with. And when we have fun, our body's more relaxed, our breathing's under control, and we simply can serve air better and we have a better sack rate. So guys, that's my five tips plus my little six tip there of having fun of what I do to control my sack rate. And, and that's one of the reasons or probably the main reasons I have such a low sack rate. Guys, if you got any questions, please put it down in the comment section below. Let me also know what you do to help control your sack rate as well. Guys, I really hope you enjoyed this video. If you did, simply smash that like button for me and definitely share this video as well. As always, make sure you follow us on Instagram and Twitter, like us on Facebook, pin us on Pinterest, subscribe to us here on YouTube, and as always, guys, we appreciate your business. Guys, we really appreciate you watching our videos. If you liked it, make sure to give us a big thumbs up. If you're not a subscriber, simply hit that subscriber button for us and make sure you hit the little bell to turn on all notifications. If you want to see some other cool videos, make sure to click these links here. They could be scuba tips, they could be diving videos, search and recovery videos, or gear reviews. Once again, guys, we really appreciate it.